Hey, it's time for Mixing Feedback Monday, episode 3. Today we got another mix by Bo Denirius, who also sent a mix last week. And before we play the song, let's see what he said. I've written, recorded, produced, and mixed a song myself in my home studio, so I have less perspective on it. Happens to all of us. I think I've started on some 20 plus versions of it that I've scrapped. The only thing I didn't play plus record are the fretless basses, which was expertly played by Jerome Wells from Fiverr. Hope I didn't butcher that name. It's a dramatic slow song with a long, quiet section in the middle and sound effects to finish it off. It's pre-mastering with just a limiter to catch the peaks. Is there too much of anything too little as always i'm gonna play the song in its entirety listen to it with headphones one time after that i'm gonna pause the video play it with speakers and then we're gonna talk about it
Okay, fantastic. That was really nice. I really like that song. Before I say anything, uh, let me just pause the video and listen with speakers as well. And then I'll give you my first impressions. But fuck, that was really nice. Okay, so I heard it with speakers too. Again, sounds really good. I really like kind of the end bit, like the sound effects at the end. I really like this kind of uh, quiet part. Your vocals, again, are mixed really, really super well. That's something you gotta, you gotta, you gotta teach me how, how you make your vocals sound so good, honestly. They remind me of just... just some of my favorites reminded me a little bit of King Crimson. Overall, the vibe of the track kind of reminded me of uh, the band Archive, who I think are British band. Uh, I don't know if you know them, but just overall, I kind of got those vibes. Those fretless basses are really beautifully done, really well recorded and really well mixed. It's not very conventional to pan bass tracks that wide, but because they are doubled and they're both kind of like injecting almost equal amounts of energy, I'm totally behind that approach. It's kind of refreshing to hear for sure. Sure. So the beginning when it's just the two basses and the vocals, I just love it. There's really nothing I can say or add. With your drums, my only slight issue is with the snare sound. I feel like the snare sound almost doesn't have body. It's just kind of hits and dies like right away so i don't know the snare could be done a little better and i like the snare sound you have but maybe you can kind of add some layers of more snare so maybe something slappy with a big tail kind of like these gunshots that you have in the end when they fall on the same beat as the snare then it's kind of like your sample gives a characteristic of a snare and that's a gunshot like sound effect kind of adds a lot of impact and a lot of tail and a lot of body which i think are really nice so maybe maybe quieter at the beginning or something you can like add some of those layers or just add totally other layers layers of foley and stuff like that as well this is actually my favorite kind of mix because i feel like you have some sound effect elements there so you're already kind of bridging the gap between music and sound effect but i feel like you can even go further with that so something that i notice is that those gunshots kind of come and go they don't really feel like they belong to the environment in that the sound comes then disappears within the sound is is a certain space right so let's let's listen to this gancha So this like a gunshot slash cannon sound is obviously happening in like a really big, open, spacious environment. But the rest of your tracks don't really come from that same space, if that makes sense. So it'd be cool if you, you know, again, now that you're in the realm of sound effects, go further down in the realm of film. Maybe lay some ambience tracks where it's, it could be anything. It could be kind of wind or it could be, I don't know, rain. Just anything that indicates that we are indeed in like a bigger space. And this is not something you can do with reverb because reverb, you can have large reverbs, but they're always large indoor reverbs. But maybe you can find like impulse responses of a valley or something like that, or use uh, effects like echo and stuff like that to kind of create that outdoorsy feel for the rest of your track as well. This is completely like a subjective opinion. Once again, I noticed your true peak value is being really high. So yeah, minus 0 0.7, minus 0 0.4. Even when you start the track, almost right away, we get like quite a huge true peak level. Yeah, like 0.4 right out the gate. In terms of energy and impact as well, like it's something where, I mean, if you're starting at, at a point where your true peak is at that level and your integrated values are at 11, 12, then it's hard to go up from that point so i would like turn down that whole area i would turn up this whole area because if i set my speaker volume so that i'm comfortable listening to them here once i get to this part they're a little bit too quiet so those strings can definitely come up those piano lines can definitely come up your whisper lines are really clear and very nice sounding i really like that sound again it kind of reminded me a little bit of like search tankian has some some songs where he like whispers more and your whisper voice is very nice and very well mixed so there's definitely room for for, uh, for the layers below the whisper vocals to come up a little bit. 
Yeah, these snares just to me, they they are lacking a little bit body and tail. And, you know, in your track, there is space. So in terms of composition, this track has a lot of room in it, right? Meaning that you don't have, you know, three synth layers and a bass line and kicks and three types of cymbals and all these things kind of competing for the same space. You have very few elements, so you can definitely give more room to each element to shine. I think your kicks sound really good, but I think your snare is not really like the best sound in there. I think something you do, which is really kind of part of your style, because I saw it in the previous mix and I'm seeing it in this mix as well. You have elements that don't sound like they are in the same environment. So again, I'm feeling, I'm hearing the vocal as if it's really close to me and I'm hearing those strings as if I'm I'm kind of at the back of a concert hall, which, you know, is, is an interesting approach for sure. And it could be your signature approach. From a technical standpoint, there's nothing I can say to criticize it. It's never This sound right here, I'm not sure if this is from your vocals or is it like some kind of doubling where you pitch shifted your vocals or something like that? Or if it's just the bass, I can't really identify what I'm hearing. It's never me, it's always them. It sounds a little strange to me. I really can't say anything technically wrong with it. It just feels really strange sounding to me. So maybe, you know, I don't know. If you told me what it is, I'd be like, oh, and then I would love it. But just kind of like the first impression is like, what the hell is that? I am a man of dust and dust. Um, definitely your whispers in these areas are a little on the quiet side. But again, if, if that's your mixing preference, that's fine. But then when we kind of come to the end... So here I'm kind of hearing the, the whisper lines a little louder than at the beginning. Something about these whisper lines is that like I hear the S's fine, but then in terms of intelligibility, I don't hear everything unless that's what you want. I don't know how much you want the kind of whisper backing vocals to be intelligible, but they're not super intelligible. I'm hearing one click here one more time. Yeah, I'm hearing one sort of click on like my right side or something. Do you hear that? So again, that's something to investigate in your mix. Again, could be a fade or something, or could be just from bouncing. Investigate that one for sure. So the strings here are really kind of nice and wide and, and they kind of like wash over you. It just kind of put me in such a nice kind of state of mind. Almost like I forgot what I was doing and I was just totally drowned in the music, which is really nice. This is not mixing feedback per se, but I would say like you have so much room here to add more layers. Again, it's up to you if you want to go uber realistic, but I feel like you're already kind of like breaking out of the mold of most genres, right? So you have a fretless bass, but you have at the same time kind of electronic drums. And then you have these like really wide orchestral strings going on. You're already in this kind of gray area genre wise, which is a great place to be. With that in mind, I would, I don't know, try to try to get weird with these strings or layer them add some synth layers add some really crazy like modulation effects or things like that so that it's more there's more interest there and again you have so much room to add and layer on things even fully like i don't exactly know what kind of story you're trying to tell since you are in the realm of sound effects like there's so much more you can do through fully to kind of add to these textures a little bit so that they're not just a straightforward snare sound or not just a straightforward like string sound but they have some things kind of in and around them that add to their texture. This is like the shtick of the past few years where I don't, I no longer just hear snares. I no longer just hear synths. I hear multiple layers of things. And those are like the mixes that are really kind of interesting for most people. So here you have like a gorgeous choir-like sound. You have these strings. There's definitely room, especially 
especially in the low end maybe these kind of like rumbly underwater sound effects that you introduced in the end they could be quietly like beginning to manifest themselves there because when they kick in here they're very they're very out of nowhere So they're beginning here, but I'm always like, well, what story is being told here? Like, where did these clouds suddenly come from? And it'd be cool if you, if I can trace this sound all the way back to like this area. Maybe really subtle, maybe really in the back, maybe just sounds of wind, maybe very kind of distant rumbles and stuff. And definitely you have a lot of space in your low end in this area to, to add some layers without kind of like having to remix all the other elements so that it like kind of subtly starts and by the end it's at full blast but kind of starting a thunder sound here and then it peaking three seconds in and dying out you know 12 seconds in is not super realistic which could be your choice but i always just feel like what story are you telling with these sound effects right and try to tell more of that story try to think of before and after i think there's a lot of space in your mix to bring in those sound effects and it's definitely nice you're kind of introducing them at the end but they could also make the beginning really interesting and they could be kind of different types of sound effects so you can still preserve your gunshotty cannon like thundery underwater sounds uh, although those things you can have in the end but there's so much at the beginning that you can add in terms of interesting textures interesting sound effects definitely there could be a whole ambience track under the whole track and that is especially needed around here because i hear something here which let's try listen together did do you hear this i hear <laughs> It's, I'm hearing that you, you know, have a fade on your vocals. It's cut right at the place where you're taking a breath and just a little bit of your breathing has been let in, but it's very synthetic. <laughs> like it was like, <sighs> but then you cut it and put a fade there. So we're just, we're just catching one slight whisper of it. So. So a lot of parts in this area, I'm hearing your vocals fade in and out. I'm hearing your vocals come in, go out, come in, go out. And that's because the kind of floor, the let's say noise floor, and in this case, I don't mean like noise, but I mean what you have as a bed on your track, which is the strings and the piano are quiet enough. They're not really masking the quietest parts of your vocals. So what happens is like, I hear this like bed of elements and then your vocals poke out and go back in, poke out and go back in, poke out and go back in. So having some artificial noise, and I don't mean noise as in like white noise, but I mean any kind of uh, ambience track that you can find that is the correct environment for your mix and the story you're trying to tell. If you lay it under, then it just creates this m more realistic environment. This is kind of like, yeah, I'm watching, a, I'm watching a performance of a piano and strings and somebody's like whispering in my ear, but every once in a while they kind of cut out. Like I, I hear that this is a recording and it's almost like, breaking the fourth wall a little bit because I can hear those fades. I can hear like tail ends of some inhales and exhales before you start the lines. You know, it will be really easy to just add one track on the bottom here. That way we won't hear your vocals fade in and out. It will feel more natural, all of those things. I love the way you get out of this bridge really reminds me of archive and just overall like this is this is very like trip hoppy but also like a little king crimson -y and just very nice and very emotional really good composition i try not to uh, comment on composition because i want to focus on the mix with this song i just felt to say because it makes the mixing um less complicated as well if you have a few more layers so you have more decisions to make in the mixing state rather than going well everything is loud enough nothing is clashing with anything else you can definitely create a lot more texture here oh yeah this snare I love the sound of that. So we have that like upfront snare and we have something kind of taily happening in the end. It's very nice and impactful. By comparison, this snare. Yeah, right. So that so that's what I would say. This would be a composition comment, so forgive me for giving those. But I feel like that piano line can come back somewhere around here one more time, maybe with slightly different production. Doot. 
Could be a cool idea. And with your whispers, some comment I gave you last week, I would say here applies as well. Create more contrast between your whispers and your uh, main vocals so that your whispers could be a little more like evil and verbed out and just like chamber like. And then that contrast helps your main vocal kind of shine through better. Same thing with your bass synth here, right? Let's compare kind of timbre-wise this bass with the fretless bass, right? This is just a straightforward bass. And the bass at the beginning, it has so much texture. It's got this buzziness. It's got all this like subtle noise in there that really makes it characteristic and really makes me love that fretless bass. And by comparison, this bass line is fine, but that's just it. It's just fine. It's not like, oh, you know, once I listen to this three or four times, I'm not going to remember this bass sound. I've heard it many times, but I would add some stuff to that bass line. And something you can do, for example, is to just kind of add some uh, volume variation, add a slight amount of modulation uh, could be cool. These gunshots or these cannon sounds, what story are they telling? Because to me, they are almost being used as a percussive element, which is totally fine. But like here you have some space, I don't know, like a cocking of a gun or something thing because these sounds are just coming out of nowhere so it's like what's their origin what was happening who who did it what can be added to kind of add to this story of this gunshot maybe some movement maybe some foley again like do some foley stuff i think it would be really cool so that it's not like whoa where did that come from and then where did it go to Love the, love the timbre of voice in this area. This is something where if at the beginning you want your vocals to be more dry. At the end of phrases, if you just slightly add some reverb, that would be really cool. So you don't have to, because you're like, you're sustaining one um, note here. So you can really kind of come to the rescue of your voice there because your voice is like losing energy as you're sustaining this note. So a little reverb comes up and goes like, and just adds a little more energy to the end part of it and makes the tail more smooth because this tail is like quiet, quiet, quiet. It's gone, like so, so suddenly gone. I just love that. That's that's gorgeous. And that's texture right there, right? That's not like a note. That's not timbre. That's just texture. That just tickles me in the best way. Love this stuff at the end. Love the tail. Really beautiful. Just kind of like to summarize, I felt like overall some of your true peak levels are really high. So I, I know this is like pre-mastering and you just kind of slapped a limiter on there, but get some of those highest peak values under control. Cause if you start a mix by hitting minus four, like right off the bat, there's very little space to go to build like any kind of climax from there. So, you know, that part could be overall a little quieter Then drums come in like, Ooh, nice. Then drums go out, drums come back in. This part can definitely be louder. There's quite a lot of difference in value between this and this which makes this entry really impactful but you can add a good three or four db to this um to this section and still maintain that level of impact you know it would still be as impactful but the negative side of being this quiet is that yeah as i was listening with speakers i was hearing these fine these parts loud and so i adjusted my volume a little bit and then when we got to this part it was too quiet i am a man of dust and dust these parts are perfect. These vocals are super well done. So yeah, my biggest comment here is add more layers. So that dee -doo, dee -doo, dee -doo. could use more layers. Your snare could use more layers. Even your kick has really nice body, could have more impact. Your sound effects could use more layers and more kind of ambiences behind everything so that it feels more real. So I don't go, oh, where did this gunshot come from? And then where the, where the hell did it go? Same way that I go, whoa, where's all this thunder and stuff come from? And then where did it go, right? So have, have 
things more peppered in, even like mix really low all over the track. Add more kind of textural interest to your strings. Add more textural interest to your whispers. Unless you really intend to break the fourth wall, make sure that these fades around this area are not super audible. Uh, so yeah, those were my overall notes. I hope you found this useful. For everybody else, if you need feedback for your mixes, definitely drop me a line. I'll put the link to my blog post in the description where I describe how to do that. Thank you again, Bo, for sending me mixes. These are really nice. And I, yeah, like, you know, if you ever release them, I would love to put them on my Spotify and listen to them. This track was really cool. Really lovely. Just great composition. Add more to it texturally. Do more layering. And otherwise, I really just feel like you're, you're doing really solid mixes, man. Really good vocals. Really kind of pro-grade vocals. And um, sound design is an area where you can definitely um, improve the most. Because you have a good composition. You have good mix. So just the like quality of your sounds and the timbre of your sounds could be a little better. Because when you, when you do have sounds that have those textures, like voices and these um, fretless basses, it just sounds perfect. And then when we get to the parts where it's like bass synths, I'm just, you know, these bass synths are good. They're going to make people go, hmm, but they're not going to make people go, oh. That's the difference, right? So, but they won't blow anybody's mind. And with a little layering and sound design, if you make every element as impactful and as like, you know, as the first fretless basses, then fuck, you know, people will be listening to you and people will be tuning in and wanting more. That's for sure. I'll see you later. Bye.